live from Atlantic City, apparently, is behind us today. Uh, for those of us wondering about uh, what, what the scene is behind us, uh, just uh, from New Jersey, not from Atlantic City, but um, that's Atlantic City. And there you go. So, hi, how are you? Uh, welcome to the uh, Coffee Talk for Friday. And I do have my coffee again. So just so you know, I was drinking it earlier, so we're, we're, we're valid now. Um, today's uh, uh, talk is on um, uh, can spinal surgery or spine surgery affect walking? And it's, it's a very broad topic and, you know, tempted to say just yes and any questions. But uh, let me try to go through a little bit better uh, than that. Uh, we're talking spine surgery, you know, obviously there's the neck surgery, mid-back, low-back surgery in any of those places. To the extent there's a neurological injury, uh, then, of course, it can affect walking and so on. But uh, we're talking, I think, really more, at least I'm thinking more about uh, recovering from a, you know, basic disc surgery in the back and the low back, like a disc herniation, a microdiscectomy or an endoscopic endoscectomy, things that affect the low back, the neck all things being equal, generally will not affect walking unless there's some neurological injury where you're in a hard collar and you can't, you know, move quite quite correctly. That might affect you. But we're really discussing uh, or talking about low back, straightforward, uh, low back, run of the mill kind of thing, low back surgery, so to speak, uh, where you're dealing with a disc injury or maybe a lumbar fusion, something of this nature, where there's no significant neurological injuries going to make you walk abnormally because there's weakness or numbness in your leg or knee or hip or something of that nature. So um, to answer that kind of question, where you have disc herniation or you need a lumbar fusion and you have your surgery, will it affect you know, how, you, how you walk? Well, again, aside from any neurological injury that may occur during surgery, which you know, of course could happen, it can because it, it affects the overall mechanism of uh, walking. Now, walking, and I think I've said this on other uh, videos, is um, uh, involves uh, a lot of different structures that need to work together, right? So we, there's books and lectures and, and, and professions that are go around uh, walking and gait analysis and how you walk and how you plant your foot and how your knee bends and push off and all of these, these kinds of things. Very complex uh, uh, action. Uh, but it involves more than just the leg from you know, the hip down. It involves the hips, it involves the pelvis, it involves the spine, uh, it involves the arms, and it involves an entire structure. Uh, so when you're walking, you're moving you know, all of those things. Uh, your hips are moving, your pelvis is rotating one way and the other and shifting side to side. Uh, the spine itself is rotating and bending as you move your sacroiliac joints, which are the joints that connect your spine to your pelvis, uh, also move a, a little bit as you're as you're walking. So it's a it's a complete uh, motion. Everything is moving in concert and uh, together to make the the gait uh, a normal gait. You know, so if you affect any of those things, you will affect the ability to walk. Example: uh, Let's start with the hip. You do hip surgery. You have a hip replacement. May not be your hip is maybe not moving the way it did before until it heals. Obviously, that's going to be throw off the way the hip moves. That's going to push throw off the entire structure there. Your spine will move in a, in a different, maybe abnormal way. Your pelvis will also. So it will affect your ability to walk, having had hip surgery. But having low back surgery also can affect it in the other direction. And it's something we've come to understand as time has gone on, particularly. Uh, our hip uh, surgeons have uh, pointed this out in concern that uh, low back surgery, low back fusions change the ability and the way in which you walk, and uh, it can affect the surgeries that they do on the on the hips, the hip replacements that they that they they perform. So, if you if you uh, affect the ability of the muscles to work, you make an incision, move the muscles around. Muscles now are healing; they're not really working in the concert they were before. That will throw things off, and it can affect the way you walk. If you fuse the spine so that it's no longer bending and moving the way it was before, you change the motion of it from what it was before. That will have a cascade type effect on the pelvis, the hips, and and the legs, and walking uh, too. So the answer is yes. Uh, if you throw off your uh, the the whole concert structure that's going on, the whole cascade that's going on in any way, 
that can affect uh, the way you walk. This is one of the reasons why you rehabilitate after you know low back surgery. Um, it's not uh, so much the incision of the muscles. You got to, but it's the whole thing. You got to get the entire thing working again, you know, correctly and together. The larger the procedure, the more that's been uh, disrupted, the more that's been changed, the more rehab that may be necessary. So the rehabilitation often is to make everything work together again as they were before or it, or potentially in a new way, but at least in the most normal way uh, possible. So that is uh, the way that spine surgery, that's basic surgery, not dealing with neurological injuries or major uh, leg length discrepancies. Your legs or one leg is made shorter than the other by some type of injury. Uh, ba basic spinal surgery, doing disc surgery or even endoscopic surgery with a small incision even injection that you know affects the muscles and gives you spasm uh, potentially can throw off the whole structure, how they all work together, and therefore how you would uh, how you would walk and so on. Uh, uh, sort of a, a re reverse of that is an injury can also do that. So if you have an injury, let's say you have a disc herniation that doesn't get better, and you have a lot of uh, you know sciatic type pain and it's hard to walk. Obviously, you're walking abnormally, but <clears throat> You remove the disc herniation. Let's say the pain goes away. My leg pain's gone. Well, it's been you know several months potentially that you've been walking abnormally uh, or limping and uh, and so on. So the muscles and of the back, the structures of the back have been used abnormally now for several months potentially. So now the the pain's gone. Uh, you may not simply just say, "Oh, the pain's gone. Everything just goes back to the way it was. You walk fine." everything's great, you may need to rehabilitate. In other words, teach your body, again, how to walk correctly. And you may have developed some maybe pain in an area that uh, you didn't have before because you're, you're limping, let's say, on one leg and uh, some other part of your back or leg, hip starts hurting because that's being used abnormally. Pain is removed, but still, you may still have that uh, residual pain by having walked abnormally for so long because of an injury. Again, rehabilitation is uh, the way to go. Sometimes you treat it surgically, injections and so on, but generally rehab after. So it is all connected. Uh, it's connected in ways that uh, uh, are complex and you throw one thing off, uh, you, uh, you can throw the entire thing off. So spine surgery absolutely can affect the way you walk, uh, usually temporary, usually easily uh, recover from rehabilitation if you know may recover immediately not need anything but you may need some rehab but it certainly can affect the way in which you walk not so much because of the the pain necessarily uh, you have after the procedure but just because the structures are no longer acting as they had prior to the procedure or prior you know to the injury um, and of course it goes without saying I hope that if it hurts maybe it's painful until it heals that's going to affect the way you may potentially the way you walk also. But assuming it heals perfectly fine, again, there's a rehabilitation aspect to it. So yes, it can affect the way you way you walk. Uh, one needs to be aware, you know, aware of that uh, when anyone has uh, you know spinal surgery on the on the low back. All things being uh, all things being equal, um, I think that's probably what I wanted to say about this. I don't know if I went. No, oh, it's a good good time. See if we have any uh, any questions. We do have a question. Uh, can some type of back support help when walking post surgery? Well, maybe I should do a talk on low back supports. Um, actually, because people ask me about low back supports, you know, all the time. Um, low back supports really are um, uh, a, a feedback mechanism, mostly. Uh, it's something you put on so that as you're moving, you may not lift uh, right away. You may hold back from doing something, remind you that you may, you have a, a back injury or had had back surgery, so you shouldn't you know, jump and do something. It gives you some mental feedback that there's an in, there's a recovery uh, going uh, going on. The um, the low back uh, uh, braces that people use after surgery, some of them are very restrictive and some of them are not so restrictive. A uh, lumbar support that's more of an elastic-y support 
uh, that gives you that feedback, as I mentioned, uh, that you have something on, you've had surgery, you best not lift something quickly or move quickly. Those kinds of elastic uh, supports don't really affect um, your ability to walk very much. They're not restricting you. They're, they're, they're more of a, a feedback mechanism and a, a little bit of a pressure maybe on the wound to hold uh, the bandages or so on in place. There are um, braces that are much more restrictive. And back in the day when we used to do lumbar fusions, we would put people on something called clamshell braces, which are these rigid plasticky braces that you sort of tie, not tie, but Velcro onto somebody front and back, a clamshell onto somebody. The thought is that, uh, you know, you stop the spine from moving. It can't bend, it can't turn. So they keep it, you know, stop it from moving. Um, unfortunately, we found out, and now we know it makes sense. It actually doesn't really do that. Um, it uh, actually increases the motion in your back. <laughs> it doesn't decrease it um, because it's a one structure. It's a whole. It, that's one structure. It's one one continuous thing. The leg, the hip, the pelvis. The it all moves together. So when you're walking, you're moving your spine. Okay, you put a clamshell on. It's you're going to be me walk a little funny. But it's going to make the spine move. In a, in a somewhat abnormal way and actually kind of cause more abnormal motion and doesn't work. So if you wanted to, to, to stop someone from actually moving their spine when they walk, you have to mobilize their hip too. So it's a hip it's called a hip cuff you put on their hip. So now you're really having <laughs> difficulty walking because you've got this clamshell brace, this cuff on your hip and you're pretty immobile. And that tends to immobilize the spine much, much better. So to answer the question, yes, that would affect the way you walk. A uh, lumbar support or, uh, or elastic-y thing, not, 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 so, not so much. It's not gonna affect really the way you walk. It's more for that mental uh, feedback. The clamshell, which I don't, don't think anyone really uses anymore that I've seen, uh, that that's uh, that's going to uh, affect the way you walk because it's it's tr it's a trying to immobilize something that's trying to move, but in the process of doing that, it's actually making it move in a more abnormal way. So we we don't use those uh, very much anymore. Let's see. If there's any other question? I hope that answered that question. That was a, that was a long answer there. Ah, does the patient need to use a cane or walker after a back fusion? Um, some people do need to use a, a walker, uh, of course, uh, because it's uh, it's difficult to walk because of pain. Generally, it um, has to do with where you start. Uh, if someone didn't use a walker before, uh, we uh, hope, hopefully will not have them use a walker after. If we do, it is, it is a, um, uh, a short-term transition to walking freely again. So we want people to get up and walk after surgery. They may have some uh, pain as a result of talking probably larger uh, reconstructive procedures in the back. We want them to get up and move. They may have a little difficulty getting out of bed because it's painful to get up. As I say, you're moving your legs, you're moving your spine. So using a walker, you can offload the spine a little bit and, and get moving more quickly. But as soon as one can get rid of that, one is one is better, you know, better off. As far as a cane goes, cane uh, may provide someone with some again some support when they're walking. Uh, that that's that's fine. Again, it's a way in which uh, one can offload uh, offload the spine. We tend not to give people canes uh, when they get after spinal surgery if they need if they have difficulty walking. We may we would give them a walker um, because that's really both sides kind of thing, as opposed to a cane, which is you know one side. Canes are used more often when you have a, a an extremity uh, one side extremity injuries, your hip, your knee, your ankle, whatever. A cane offloads one side. But if you had spinal surgery, you know, it's generally both sides are bothering you. The whole back is bothering you, so you want to use uh, support on both sides. But we tend to you know, avoid using it. Uh, if we can, and if we need to, it's short term just to get people moving because we want people to move and not lie in bed. Let's see. I think uh, we hit the magic number of 15 minutes. There you go. So, um, you know, I mean, if I was in Atlantic City, maybe that would mean something. I, I don't know, uh, but it means something here. But thank you for uh, joining us for today's uh, coffee talk. We'll have another one next week. Always interested in your feedback and any other. Uh, um, any other topics you'd like to hear. And thank you for the really, really good questions. All right, see you next week.